Hi, this is Michelle from MinimaDesigns.com, and today I'm going to show you how to build a really simple placeholder or landing page. Right now I'm working on developing a site for a friend of mine. I've already installed WordPress and I'm starting to put together some of the back end, but I don't want other people to see the site while I'm working on it. Right now, if you go to the site, you'll see just a blank WordPress installation. I want to go ahead and hide that and make the site work for me while I'm working on the back end. First thing I'm going to do is install the plugin. So I'm going to go back to my WordPress installation and go to my plugin screen. Now, I've already purchased this plugin. There are great plugins that you can buy called premium plugins. Sometimes you have to buy a plugin in order to get the functionality you want. I'll be using the coming soon plugin from Seedprod. I've already purchased and downloaded the plugin, so I'm going to go ahead and upload it. I'm going to click Add New. And when I get to the Add New, I have the option to upload a plugin. I'll click the Upload link. And then I'm going to navigate to where I've saved the file. I usually keep a folder called Plugins where I can keep everything handy. Go ahead and click Open and then Install Now. Should only take a couple of seconds depending on your internet connection. Great, it's installed and now I'm going to go ahead and activate. Perfect, now it's shown up on my Plugins screen. Next thing I want to do are modify my settings. Now I can get to my settings one of two ways. I can either go to Plugins and click on Settings or I can go to the Settings Nav item and click on Coming Soon Pro. I'm going to go ahead and click my Settings button, and here I am with all the settings for this particular plugin. Now, the first thing I want to do is install my license key. Now, when you purchase a premium plugin, you'll often get a license key that will activate upgrades and maintenance versions of the plugin. You want to make sure that you keep things up to date so you keep your site safe and secure. Now, I already have my license key copied to my clipboard, so I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in and click Check License. That's going to verify that I have a valid license, and then I'm going to go ahead and click Save All Changes. Great, so I'm up to date. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and enable Maintenance Mode. That's going to actually activate the plugin so it works on the site. And here's a little quick pro tip. Because I'm logged into the current site, when I look at the site, it's not going to appear like anything has changed. If I go to the same browser and click Refresh, you can see nothing has changed from the default installation. But here's what I need to do. I'm going to go into a different browser that doesn't have my cookie saved, and in this case I'm going to use Firefox, and I'm going to go ahead and refresh. And now you can see, wow, what a change. The site has actually gone away, and now I've got my placeholder site active. Now, I was playing around in here earlier, so I've got some of my copy in there. I'm happy with what the copy looks like, but I want to tweak the design a little bit. So let's go ahead and change that now. I'm going to go back into WordPress into that settings screen and scroll down. Now you can see where I've added my headline and my body copy. You can use HTML tags in here. You can also use this visual editor to make it match the rest of your site or whatever you want it to look like. I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead and scroll down and connect it up to our mailing system. Now this particular client is using MailChimp. You have multiple options here. You can use Constant Contact, Aweber, all the big guys. Right now we're using MailChimp. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. I wanna make sure that I ask for the name. You want the first name and last name. Go ahead and click Save Changes in case you've been modifying anything. Save early, save often. It's gonna save you in the long run. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that and now I'm gonna scroll back down. Now, if you've used MailChimp, you may or may not know that often in order to integrate it, you have to find something called an API key. They've got great tutorials. It's super easy to create them and find them. I've already saved it, so I'm going to go ahead and paste it in right there. And I'm going to go ahead and click Refresh List. Now, what that's going to do is populate all the lists that I have in my MailChimp account. So I'm going to go ahead and select the list that I know we want to use. I want to enable my double opt-in. You've got some other settings here. If you set up groups or interests, you can go ahead and modify that there. Looks great. I'm going to go ahead and save my changes. Now there's one more setting I want to tweak before we get on to the design stage. I want to scroll down here to what we have after the after subscribe settings. Now this is what shows up after someone clicks the submit button. I've already populated this with some text, so I'm happy with that. And I'm going to go ahead again, click the save all changes button. Now that we've got our settings ready, now we can tweak the design. I'm going to go ahead and click the Design tab and look at my options here. Now, if I was just using a plain background color, I could modify it right here. I know I'm going to use an image, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this as a white background. My image I've already previously uploaded to my media library, so I'm going to go ahead and select it here. Now, a quick note, if you're using a wide background image, you want to make sure it has a horizontal orientation. 
if you use a vertically oriented design, it's going to stretch and the aspect ratio is going to seem a little bit off. So I've already prepared this image in Photoshop. I've already compressed it, so I know it's going to load quick. I'm going to go ahead and insert it right here. And I'm going to check I want it to cover or stretch to fit the background. I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like when I save changes. I'm going to go ahead and go back to Firefox and refresh. Wow, that looks really cool. But now I can't see my person behind here. So I want to tweak that next. I'm going to go back to my design settings and scroll down. So now you can see a few more options that we can modify. We've got our text color, which right now is black. I'm okay with that. We've got our link and button color, which is kind of this orangey red. I'm not crazy about it, so I'm going to go ahead and modify this. Now, I've previously copied my hex code, and a hex code is basically the value of the web code for color. So you can use the color picker, or if you know the hex code, you can just go ahead and populate it there. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down again, and I'm going to click Save All Changes. Now, since I'm already here and I know I want to tweak a couple more things, I'm just going to go ahead and do it before I refresh the screen. I'm going to scroll down to where we have container. Now, the container is that rounded image that contains all of our text. You can see we've enabled it, so we can turn that on or off. It's got a color here of kind of like a light gray. I'm okay with that. You know what? I think I want to orient it to the right so that I can see my person's face. So I'm going to go ahead and click right. I don't really want a border. I'm okay with the rounded corners, but you know what? I do want to change the opacity. So I'm going to select that. And I want it maybe at like 70 or 60%. So I'm going to try 70 and see what that looks like. Go ahead and click Save All Changes. And then go back to the site to refresh. Oh, cool. It looks really good now. Now you can see that the input boxes have changed color, as has the button. And everything matches, and it feels great. Now you can look at the photo here, and you may want to orient your photo. You may want to play with stuff. But this gives you so many options to quickly put up a page. Next, you'll want to test your opt-in, make sure that everything's going through smoothly, and go ahead and announce your site to the world. For more tips and tricks and WordPress tutorials, come visit me at minimadesigns.com.